All right. I'm going to need that from you. Okay. Hey, Joanne, can you see us? Yep. I can see the and screen. You, you can see our screen? Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. So, guys, today uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, training on CMAs, comparative market analysis. Okay. So, um, yeah. That's fine. So basically, um, you know, there's a few different reasons you would use a comparative market analysis. Uh, a couple of the ones that I've run into personally are um, obviously getting the valuation of a home for a homeowner, right? So that we can market the property at the correct pricing. Uh, so kind of strategizing with them and, and putting something together so that they can understand what the valuation of their home is. I've also put together CMAs for estates and estate attorneys. Okay, so um, kind of putting a price tag on what the value of a particular property is in reference to an estate. Okay, so that's something you might run into. Um, and also, they can be used for marketing purposes. So you could put something together to market a property for a, uh, to, or market yourself to a owner, I'm sorry. Um, so there's, there's a couple different reasons why we might use one of these. Um, so, you know, you can kind of tailor your experience, your, your user's experience uh, as necessary. Okay. Now there might be, a, uh, there might be a reason that somebody wants a valuation to appear on the high end, um, or there might be a reason that they want the valuation to appear on the low end. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that you should manipulate numbers, but I am saying that, there's always an opportunity for fluctuation. Um, another reason that you might put together a CMA um, or go through some of these same processes are um, appraisals where the appraisal has maybe come in low and you're trying to present a case to the appraiser as to why you believe that the property is actually worth more. Um, in that case, you're probably not gonna use a CMA, but you're gonna put together some comps anyways, right? So, um, CMAs should be a part of your common uh, language, if you will. All right. And so uh, you can go under clients once you've put together some CMAs and you can go to my CMA. So I'm logged into Bright MLS right now. And this is my Bright. So you can see my name up here in the top corner, Doug Gallagher. Um, and here's some CMAs that I have put together for different clients. Okay. You can see. This is something that we do pretty frequently. This isn't uh, new. And these are all uh, 2021. So I imagine there's probably multiple pages. No, there's not. But um, all these are 2021. I don't believe that they store these indefinitely. I think that there's actually a, an expiration period on some of these. Okay. Uh, these are the different things that I've put together for different individuals that I've worked with over the past year, basically. Okay. Actually, this is last six months. You're going from June to um, September. All right. So um, we're just going to kind of pick a property generically and put together a CMA for that property. All right. Now, I think it's important to understand the process, the real process of putting together a authentic CMA includes a visit to the home before you do it. Okay. If I call Joe, and say, not well, I won't say, I won't say Joe because we have Joanne and she goes by Joe. So if I call Lou and I say, Lou, I hear you want to sell your house. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Lou probably thinks pretty highly of his own property, right? So I probably shouldn't take his word about his property because he probably, you know, takes pride in what he has, whether it's in great condition or not, right? It's his. So the most valuable use of my time or the most appropriate way to go about getting a true valuation for Lou would be to visit physically his home and understand, is the yard maintained? Is the landscaping done professionally or is it overgrown and out of shape? Are the uh, soffits and fascia painted or are they riddled with holes from uh, termites and carpenters? Uh, is the roof in good condition or are there shingle tabs missing that I can see from the ground looking up? I wouldn't probably climb on his roof necessarily, but if 
if I look up and I see missing shingle tabs, I can assume that there might be some leaking going on with that roof. And there might just be some, some other stuff, right? If I go into the house and I see that it's a uh, wall-to-wall carpet, but the carpet is in shambles and has a mat half inch thick from dog hair, um, I need to take that into consideration when I'm, when I'm making my estimations on the value of this property and how we're going to market it, right? It also gives me an opportunity to speak on these things and to present them to the owner as a professional, as obstacles that we're going to have to overcome for the market, okay? Now, in my experience, this, this is not from any literature anywhere. This is not a textbook or anything else. I don't want it to be taken as such. But I would say that a $5,000 fix, let's say a, a bathroom that's in poor condition, let's say it would cost $5,000 to fix that property, to fix that, you know, whatever it is, that bathroom, will most likely cost you about $10,000 in the market, okay? So I usually double that. When I'm talking to my clients and I look at their $5,000 half bath, right, that's got some, some stuff missing, it's just in bad shape, the toilet's running constantly, and that, you know, it looks like it's got hard water stains that, uh, you know, it's, it's blue toilet with hard water stains from the 80s. Those aren't coming out. I don't care how hard you scrub that. I don't care what chemical you use. That stuff's not coming out. So, you know, let's say that bathroom we're going to cost five thousand dollars to renovate. I assume it's going to take away from the total price tag ten thousand dollars. Okay, because the client is looking at it ordinarily can't see past the fact that this is the situation. Okay, and they're they're looking at it from the worst case scenario at all. So even though you might be able to fix that bathroom for maybe four thousand dollars in the buyer's mind, they're thinking ten thousand dollars. Courtney, do you have a question? So are you saying I'm just confused with your wording? So are you yeah. saying that if you fix a five thousand dollar bathroom and then when you go on the market you can double that and make the ordinarily, price? yes. Okay. Yep. I was pretty sure. Yep. Or or it will cost you double. Okay. Okay. So yeah, either way you want to look at it, it's kind of one in the same. I think that you could achieve a you know a price, you could probably double your money and it's done well. Okay and doing the right things. If, if they just want to paint the house for the sake of painting the house, that doesn't necessarily double the, the money that they spent on the house. And now if the paint's in very poor condition and they paint the house, I think they could double their money there, right? But if the house is painted well and they just think that they want to paint it a different color, maybe a more stylish color, mm -hmm. I don't think that that necessarily brings that kind of money to the table. Oh. All right? So if they have a bathroom with just one toilet, Yes, I think that if you put a new vanity, a new toilet, a new towel holder, a new flooring, paint the thing, put a new exhaust fan in it, you know what I mean? And all those things are brand new and, and fresh. Mm -hmm. When you go to market that property, a, a buyer can wrap their head around it very simply and, and understand that it's complete, it's ready to go, it's reusable, and they're ready to pay for that. Okay, end user, they're ready to pay for that. If they got to come in and they have to undertake the, the renovation project of this, they're not sure what kind of condition the sub flooring's in. Their mind goes to the worst place possible. All right. So I'm just saying, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole today because that's almost a different training altogether. But ultimately, I think that understanding what's there will help you put together a realistic pricing strategy for these people so that when they get to the market, they're not, you know, Sides, side swipe by something that you know they didn't become right so that being said let's just pick an address and make a cma right so let's assume we went to uh lou's house matter of fact let's just let's just go on the mls and pick a property and we'll do a cma on let's do it in Kent county okay yep so we're going to search kent county Delaware. Okay. And we're going to go with, I like um, Woodfield. I've had great success in Woodfield. All right. Let's just see if there's any properties in there for sale. And there are, there's one. Okay. Um, I think this is a great little area to farm. It's right out in Magnolia. Um, easy accessibility. Okay. Um, so this individual, let's look at this listing real quick. We're going to go right to it. We're going to look at the name. Sorry. Uh, 
this is an estate of Emmanuel T. Hamilton. Okay. Uh, so Emmanuel is our seller. Let's just assume Emmanuel's daughter, whoever it is, Susie, is our seller. All right. They've inherited this property. They need to now offload it. Okay. That's most likely the scenario here. Somebody's son, daughter, or children as a whole. Yeah. So it's listed as a short sale. Okay. So why let's, let's, that's a whole nother Thing. Yeah. So why do we believe this might be listed as a short sale? Anybody have any ideas? Well, property taxes, so I'm that it's not Right. Okay. So a lot of times when people get old, and there's there's one picture, this kind of tells the story too, right? A lot of times when people get older and begin to ail in their old age they uh, lose some of their senses and their memory fades and things like that. And so the house made some of the things in the house that would ordinarily be kept in good condition might fade, right? Maybe cleanliness goes, maybe uh, leaks go on, on uh, fixed, uh, maybe showers are taken without the doors closed. I mean, there's a million things that can be, you know, uh, that can happen inside of a house with an ailing individual living there right and that's most likely what happened here or something you know they, she just didn't keep up, up with it or or something okay so that's probably why this is a short sale because the market's absolutely hot right now i think that they could probably get the 270 if this picture is, a, is an accurate representation of anything they could probably get the 270 out of it but it may end up being a short sale so we'll talk about short sales more later on uh, but for the for the sake of conversation we want to put together a cma for the estate of Emmanuel, okay? And we're gonna assume in this scenario that uh, the house wasn't in shambles, all right? We're gonna assume that the house was actually in good condition and didn't doesn't mean that it was immaculate, but it was all there, meaning that the, uh, the flooring was whole, there was no matting of dog hair on it, there was no crazy smells or, or anything, the lawn was kept the way that you see it in the picture there, it was a nice house, right? So we'll go ahead and, and save this. We'll click on that and we'll go to CMA. We can go right here down to the toolbar under actions and you'll see right here, CMA. 190 Shadywood, right? So uh, we're gonna just say, um, we're gonna create a new contact because I don't already have this contact in my, in my uh, CRM or in my, um, MLS. So we're going to say this is Sally with a capital S. Sally Jones, Jones daughter. Jones. Yeah, with a capital J. Sorry. Sally Jones, okay, who's the daughter of Emmanuel. And her email address is 1234 at Gmail. Dot com. It's going to require you to have an email address, guys, just so you understand that. It's not going to let you go without an email address. Now, you could be, it could be Mr. or Mrs. Sally. It could be uh, multiple categories over here. None of that's really important. I do like to put in the phone number. So, for the sake of today's uh, experiment, it's going to be 555-1212. Uh, okay. But that way, when I go back a year from now, when they didn't sell or something like that, I still have their contact information. So I always, I always put in a cell phone number if I can, okay? And even though the cell number actually goes here, I just put in a phone number, all right? So I'm gonna save this, all right? So this is gonna be Sally Jones, and I can put a description in here, it was what, 190, do you remember what it was? Mm. Woodfield. Which one did was? That's not the road that was on. No, what road was it on? Oh. 190 Woodfield, Magnolia, E, -E sorry. All right, anyways, you guys get what I'm going after here, all right? Um, and then I'm gonna go up here. So this is kind of my toolbar for my CRM, okay? Um, I can find all my stuff here, okay? So, um, I can go to the subject property. Uh, type in subject property fields manually. 
Um, I guess I'm kind of doing this backwards. Yeah. Um, open up a new tab. Yeah, I can I can do that. I could open up a new tab and work from two tabs, but I think the easiest way to actually do this is actually going to be go back to my search. Come back up here. I already put Sally in, so even though I went back, it, it's going to um, yeah, it's going to do it. So I was in my criteria and I put in Woodfield because that's where Sally lives. So I guess easiest way to go about it. If I wanted to find that property, let's say that they called me directly and said, hey, uh, I want to list my mother's house. She lives at 190 Shady Wood Lane, Magnolia, Delaware, 19962. I could go to the MLS, and if that property was not listed, which it normally would not be, I could put in that address here, 190, and what was it, Shady Wood? Mm -hmm. Right in Kent County in Woodfield, and I could probably less is more when you're dealing with the MLS. So I, I don't want to put too many things in here, but you can see it populated. If it were not listed, though, I could come here, unclick these two, and search bro more broadly. Now there's two, right? So the results that it's going to give me, if this property were not already on the market, were the old one where they bought it. Okay. So I can look at when she bought it, most likely 72705, all right, for $178,000. Um, I can look at that one. There's no photos available. 2005 was quite a, quite a ways back, but uh, this is most likely when she bought that property. Okay, uh, here's, the, here's the deal, basically, 2% commission. Yvonne Hall had both sides of it. I can go in and I can look at who, who it was, what it was. Was on the market for six days, one hundred seventy-eight thousand uh, dollars. It's conventional financing. Um, I can see what they closed, all that, all that kind of stuff, right? All the information, all right. And then I can go to the other one, which is today's listing, okay? Which it may be an older listing or something else in the scenario that we're talking about. But anyways, I just want you to know you can most likely find a house that way, all right. Now um, going back to my criteria. What I can also do is I can go to Woodfield. Hey, Doug, I have a quick question. Go what ahead. if the house has never been listed? How would we do that? Uh, then you would go to, if the house, that's a great question, Joe. So uh, if the house had never been listed, I would go to search because we do run into that. Maybe they bought it, um, especially if they bought it from the builder. Ordinarily, that would not have been in the MLS, especially years ago. It would have been uh, just done by the builder. So I would go to search, and then I would just go to public records. Okay. I would go to 190 Shady Wood. Kent County. Okay, and there it is. So this is now public records. Okay, I can search by owner name, I can search by all that. Now, instead of giving me an MLS number, you see here that it's Emmanuel P. Hamilton. Okay, but it's giving me the tax ID number, give me the tax identification number. So if it's never been listed before, I can still go to the MLS, go under the search tab, and I can just search public records. Okay, does that make sense, Jeff? I'll assume it does. All right. So that being said, we'll go back to residential sale now. Makes sense. Sorry. Okay. Cool. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask for sure. Just jump right in there. Um, so I'm going to go back as a residential sale though. Okay. And for the sake of pulling up comps. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to establish a baseline for this, this type of property. Right. So Sally called and said that, you know, unfortunately her dear mother passed and she gives us the address. We know that's in the Woodfield subdivision. So we go into our MLS under search and we go Kent County. We can put that in there just so that uh, it, it does help kind of narrow the search for the MLS because the MLS represents, I think, like 50 million uh, households. Okay. 
Um, so there's a, I may not be that much, but our MLS is huge. So sometimes it's going to pull up. Um, if you put in Woodfield, there might be 15 subdivisions within our MLS that are called Woodfield. We want to narrow that down to the one that's in Kent County, right? So we'll go over here to the subdivision. You see Wood, Woodcrest, Woodbrook, Woodfield. Okay, so look, here it is right here, Woodfield, and it says Kent, Delaware. Okay, that's the one we're looking for. We know that this house is inside of that development. All right. And so under coming soon and active, there's one match, right? But we're gonna look at all the stuff. So we wanna know what's for sale right now, okay? We also wanna know uh, who else, are, is, is the house that we're looking at listed? Because we can't obviously market to a property that's listed. Um, but also we wanna know what the competition is and then what the other comps are for the sake of listing this house, right? So we're gonna look at the stuff that's active under contract. There's one additional one. So this, this number just went to two when I clicked on that. Uh, any that are temporarily off the market, none of them are temporarily off the market. Any that are pending. So now there's additional one right down. Now, now there's three, right? Um, any that have been withdrawn recently, closed. Okay, now that number's eight or expired. And we'll even go to cancel. Let's just look at the whole thing. So we have eight total matches under all these criteria. Now, ordinarily, you don't have to you don't have to use all these criteria. But in a down market, we're in a very up seller's market right now, right? In a down market, it might be worth talking about people who are expired because what an expired represents is a mistake. Here's a mistake we want to avoid. Pricing your house at this price will most likely end with an expired result, right? We want to be able to convey that to them and make sure they can understand and wrap their head around the fact that I know you want, I know I hear you say you want $300,000 for your house. Here's the other people in your neighborhood with the same floor plan that have listed their house at $300,000 and they ended up with this result. And if we do the very same things and expect a different result, then we're probably going to be off, right? So that's, it's worth having a conversation around. So now we can go to, we can look at the results. So these are going to all be from Woodfield, which I prefer. Now there's not always going to be a neighborhood that you can rely on. Okay. It might be one street. Uh, Joanne and I are working on a deal right now where it's literally one street. There's not a neighborhood, you know what I mean? And it's not a very active area for selling. And so there's not a lot of comps that I can get from that one street. Whereas there are comps that I can get. Ordinarily, I want to keep those comps as tight as possible, keep them clustered as tight as possible. I would never try to go more than three miles out unless you absolutely have to, to get your comps. Okay. So these comps are all from this neighborhood. Keep in mind too that sometimes neighborhoods and uh, other things can be misrepresented in public records. All right. So there might be other homes that have sold uh, within this neighborhood, but for one reason or another, the information wasn't correct. And it, now it's not showing up in here. It never fails. I'll show up to the table and they'll say, no, uh, 123 Red Street down here sold last, last week for $35,000 more than that or whatever, you know what I mean? And I may have to go back and look and, and ordinarily it's because of something, some amount of the information was, was incorrect and it didn't show up under my search or it may be sold for sale by owner or something like that. Okay. So there's usually some other explanation for it. But here we go. Guys, this is active, active under contract. This is your pending, closed, 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 all right? So now we know that she has a three bed, two and one half bath, all right? If I had put in the criteria for a three bed, two and one half bath, it would have given me one result, okay? So sometimes you have to assume what something's worth, right? And working with these properties on an ongoing basis will allow you to make better assumptions as you go through because you'll have better information um that one half bath that could be a five to maybe ten thousand dollar grab right there okay but that one half bath is worth something okay also they're going to be looking at things like basements uh number of attached or detached garages um yard space fencing there's a lot of variables to all of this okay but we don't want to get tied down in the what in the weeds with different stuff we're just going to go ahead and save this right so we're gonna click here to save all of these. And guys, you can, uh, I do suggest that you um, organize these by status. So if for one reason or another, you get an active, a pending, an active, an active, a pending, a pending, an active, a, a sold, you know, under contract, just simply go to the status bar here 
and click it. And once you do, you see it reorganizes it, okay? So try to organize it. And I like to start with my active stuff. So I like the way it had it originally. But if you organize it here, it will tend to organize better inside of your CR or your CMA as well, okay? So we go, we go up here, we click on that box because we want to keep all of these. These are all three bed, two bed at least, right? There is one, two and a half. Um, and these are all within, uh, when it was searching, it was searching within 180 days on those, um, on those different criteria, um, active, pending, closed, those, those criteria was searching those, those, um, that, that applied by 108, zero to 180 days. So the last six months. So these are all going to be relevant, right? And you can see the, the dates here. I can organize these by date, actually. Looks like they are organized by date, um, except for that one there. So these two are out of sorts, but one's pending and one's closed. So anyways, nonetheless, I like to organize them by status, OK? And then I can go to a cart, right? And I can say, I want to put, what was her name, Sally? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you save her contact? I think so. Yeah. What was her last name? Jones. Jones. Okay. Sorry, I was looking for the person. Sometimes. Well, she is All right, so let's make a new card, right? Let's see if she's here. There it is. Yep. Which one? Keep going down. Right there it is. Okay. Yep. So it did have her contact. I don't know why it wasn't there. Probably because I haven't put a CMA together for her. Um, and so we can name this card Mom's House. So we know because maybe we've done a couple for Sally over the years, right? Updated, mom's house updated, uh, we put a date in there, whatever it is, right? We're going to save that to a cart. All right. So that's done. Now we can come back across here, go back to our CMA. So I went to actions, I went from carts to actions. Okay. And we can get that CMA rolling from here. All right. So. Go in and pick out which pages we want to use. All right, so this is my default stuff. This is what I use by default. So I actually like to take, um, I need to go in and adjust this. I don't really prefer the summary of comparables. I think it's too much information and there is such a thing as too much information. All right, so I always add a cover sheet, uh, a comparables overview, okay? Days on market, list price and close price chart, okay? The pro report, Results statistics, the price analysis. I usually actually take this price analysis out. I think it's, again, it's too much information. I need to come in and adjust this. And you can do that in settings, by the way. We'll do that's a different training altogether. But I like to use the 4F listings report and the CMA map. Okay. So these are all, all of the pages that I have that I'm going to use. But I can come over here and there's a ton more that I can add in. All right. Again, there is such thing as too much. I can come down here and I can just clear it if I want. I can set it as default. So I'm going to actually do that right now. I'm going to set this as my default. So that next time I come in here, I don't have to clean this up. It's already got what I want. So once I find a, something that works, I just scroll right to the bottom, set as default, and I can keep that. My, my um, MLS will update that immediately for me each time, okay? So I'm going to come over here, go to subject, which is the property that we're talking about, right? And um, I actually kind of want to go back. So let's go here. The second link. The, the one that I just went to? No, the second link, that one right there. Okay, yeah, I think that's what I'm actually looking for. Search. Oh, sorry, there. So I can come under this because I probably because I started from this, right? And I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to click this one and I'm going to fill from selected. 
Okay. Now it comes in here and fills in all of this stuff just from public records, basically. All this stuff is coming from public records. So it's the square footage, total acreage, the lot size, okay, heating type of sports air, cooling type type of central air. Now it's important to understand, it's important to look at this stuff because a lot of times older homes, especially that have been converted from maybe they were built in the 60s and they didn't have air conditioning, right? Uh, that were converted later on, it doesn't know that. It's not going to pick that up. So you'll come in here and it'll say wall window air conditioners, right? And not central air conditioning, even though it's been upgraded to central air conditioning. So if that's the case, I can just click on it and adjust it. I can make it say anything I want. To, okay. I should not adjust it unnecessarily. All right. This is not a place to embellish or anything like that. Okay. This is going to tell you what your water source is, all this stuff. Okay. So it's going to fill in this stuff for you automatically. All right. Now we can go to the cover. It's got the cover page there. Contact information. Sally. Da 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 da. da right. I'm not going to fill all this in, but all right. Uh, and then I'm going to go to my comparables. Okay, and now here's all of my comparables, right? And I want to use all of these. I want to go ahead and just add these in here. Now, if I, if I thought, I'm not going to use the tax, that's actually this one. Or no, that is accurate. So that's our competition. No, that's the same property. No, that's the same property. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was one active. I, I think that was it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So there's one active under contract, there's one pending. There's all these ones that are closed, and they're all three beds, two baths. Now, if one of these was a four bed, I would go ahead and exclude it. All right. If one of these is like some crazy price, you know, like one of these is like six hundred thousand dollars, I need to look. Something's probably off, right? These are these are two and three hundred thousand dollar houses, right? So, um, you know, if you see some kind of anomaly somewhere, it's worth checking into so you don't get these people inaccurate information that look like a fool. But um, I could also come down here and I could add from that cart too, because I because I did this right from my search results, it's allowed me to do this. But I could also go and add from that cart right here as well. Okay, I can add from the tax map, add from listings, remove the selected. I can do a lot of different things right here. But we're going to go ahead and utilize these ones. Okay, and I don't need to do anything. I'm going to just go to the map actually, and I'm going to look. This is another opportunity to confirm that the information you're using using is good. And here we go. If this is showing you a map of Western Pennsylvania, you're probably not doing it right. Okay. But um, here you go. So this is this is our subject property. This is the one we're talking about. And these are all of the other comparables. All right. So they're all within the same development, almost the same little section of the development, right? Uh, which is very good. And they're listed here by property uh, address. All right. So you can come in here and make adjustments. This is done the same way that a um, appraiser would approach this. Okay, I don't ordinarily make any adjustments. I I kind of leave that kind of stuff alone. You can plus and minus values and things of that nature, um, concession amounts and you know different things, especially if you're working across different subdivisions and things. However, uh, I don't normally mess with any of this. Right, I leave it alone. Um, and then I I normally go to finish first. Okay. And look at the results before I put pricing in. So I go over here, view CMA. Takes it a few seconds to generate the CMA. I go look at the results to make sure that this thing's laying out the way that I want it to lay out and that I'm familiar with the, with the information that's available so that I can make a, a decision on what I think the price should and shouldn't be, right? So here's how it's going to look on the front page. It shows just the property picture. Sometimes there's not a picture in the MLS because it wasn't ever listed or it's an old picture or whatever. So keep that in mind. Uh, you might take a picture of it while you're there so you can add it yourself, uh, whatever, the, whatever the case. This just got all of my information pulling it right out of the MLS, okay? Um, gets to the comparable overview, all right? So it's gonna tell us that uh, the listings in this analysis can be summarized as follows. They're um, listing price between $249,900 and $345,000, so this is a $100,000 contrast here, okay? They're all three bedrooms, two full bathrooms, and zero to one half bathroom, okay? So there's a broad spectrum of pricing, $100,000 worth of pricing almost, 
on the same house in the same development, right? This is why they call us to be the professionals. They're 167,000 all the way up to 229,000 or $167 all the way up to $229 per square foot, okay? Um, and so they're 165 to 237 per sold square foot. And this what is the, what's the difference there? Sold, okay? So some of these, what, what I like to convey to my sellers is that the listing price on an active listing is fantasy land. I can list your house right now, Ron, for $10 million, but if it's not worth it, it's not gonna sell, right? So I can put that, and that's gonna come up in the statistics and, and it's gonna show, right? So it might skew the statistics one way or another. Um, so I wanna make sure that I, I focus primarily on sold square foot because these are properties that most likely had to go through an appraisal uh, and went to the table and closed. Even if it was a cash deal, these people were willing to pay this money. It was a closed deal. So that, those are facts, right? You go from fancy land to facts, kind of thing. All right, so page three, days on market, okay? Looks like a wild chart, but really we're only measuring zero to 12. So these things are selling quick, right? And it's got each one. It's just a graph uh, that's kind of showing them how many days on the market. So some of these homes are selling as quickly as two days, right? And this one's selling in like one, okay? Um, 21 Shadywood, but here you go, 190 Shadywood. They're, they're on the market already 10 days. That's the house that we're comparing, okay? And then uh, 397 Shadywood, obviously quite a bit lower. Um, Sunny Meadow, they held out 12 days on the market, right? So it's just giving you a comparable <clears throat> overall. These are just days on market, okay? By address. Moving into the next section, this is your price graph, right? So some of these are still on the market or unsold, right? Especially if you have expired and stuff like that. Uh, this is what you'll, you'll be up against. But um, the pink represents the sum of the uh, of the price at closing, and the blue is the list price. Now, I am to understand that the blue is not the original list price, but the list price at which it, it was when it went under contract, okay? So the way that I explain this is you can see that homes are selling for full price when listed at the correct price. Okay, because sometimes they're coming down. Sometimes they're getting more. These guys, are, these guys are all getting more. These guys are getting exactly what they asked for. These guys are getting a little bit more, a little bit more, even more here. And these guys are taking just a little bit less. So you can see, you want to list your house up near 350, you might get it, but you're probably going to have to negotiate down a little bit. These guys are listing in between, the, probably in like the 250, 260 range, and they're getting it done. And they're getting a little bit more than they're asking for on each one of these deals or what they're asking for. Okay, these guys over here haven't gotten a deal done yet. The, the statistics aren't out, they're not closed, all right? So two of these, when I, this is our house that we're comparing right now, so obviously we don't have any settlement details. Uh, and these are the other two that are active under contract and, and pending, okay? Those have not settled, so there's not gonna be statistical data for either one of those, all right? Um, but you can see, you know, for the, the seller that wants to list at 350, I don't know, we're gonna have to negotiate, and this is probably where they were on the, uh, MLS a little bit longer, right? 12 days, raise my heart. But uh, nonetheless, you know, um, do we want, we have to make a decision. Do we want to create a feeding frenzy and, and let the uh, market drive the price higher, right? Have five or six offers? Or do we want to play the game and, and have one offer that we have to negotiate down, right? This is the, this is the question of the day when we're talking to sellers, right? And it's, Approach, sometimes either approach can be appropriate. Okay, so this is just the uh, CMA Pro report. So this is this lays out similar to your thumbnail report. Okay, so it's just a picture and some summary summarized details about the house. Okay, beds, baths, above grade uh, square feet, lot size, um, uh, year it was built, basement, waterfront, dock type. You know those sorts of things, right? And the Caesar Island School District. This is the house that we're comparing. Okay. Now we're also comparing this house, this two-story house to a um, ranch style house. That may not be appropriate, or maybe it is appropriate. You know what I mean? Um, we have to make the decision. Uh, this one is 1,289 square feet. This one is 1,300 square feet. I think that we're doing okay, all right? Some people may prefer a two-story house to a ranch house or a ranch house to a two-story house. However, 
square foot per square foot. These two aren't like on different planets. I think we're good to compare the two. Okay. Um, and there's your listing right up there. Um, so sometimes you'll need to go in and understand, you know, why a house was listed at such a price. And it usually comes out in the remarks. Okay. Talking about all the brand new things that were done for it. You know, so when your seller says, well, uh, Sally down the street got $50,000 more than you're telling me my house is worth. They also had an upgraded bathroom, an upgraded master suite, an upgraded this, a brand new paint job, a brand new roof, a brand new HVAC system. You know, they probably spent $50,000 on their house to get it to market that way. Um, so that's, a, that's an important conversation to have. Um, here we go, some more listings, all right? Um, so this is all kind of, I don't really review all of this in depth. Um, this section of the report, I kind of make sure that I bring two copies and leave one for the sellers. Okay. Uh, but I'll come in here and I'll talk about if there were concessions, some of the things that I'm, you know, are more important. Also, what I'll typically do is I'll highlight the word close or the word active or the word under contract or whatever it is. And I'll highlight the price. So I highlight the things that I want them to pay attention to. And I don't highlight the stuff that doesn't necessarily matter to the conversation that I want to have because I want to be in control of the conversation when I'm, when I'm selling them in that moment. Okay. And I want them to focus easily on things that um, matter to the conversation and not so much on the stuff that doesn't. And so if I highlight it, they can easily, their eyes immediately attract to it and make it quite a bit more simple to have the conversation. Okay. So or ordinarily I don't spend too much time on this section of the report with my people, uh, but I go more to the statistics. So here we go. This is, it's going to give me the same numbers, a bunch of different ways and people analyze information in different ways take a copy with you that they can have let them know put them at ease right up front and let them know as soon as the conversation starts i'm going to leave you with a copy of this so don't feel like uh you have to take it all in before in the next 30 minutes while we sit at this table okay um so it's going to compare the app any of the active properties now in some instances there might be four or five active properties here it's just one okay so we're the active property listed at $270,000 um, and that's $206.11 per square foot to fill on the market 10 days. It's going to average out the, market, uh, the days on market for you. All right. Again, there's only one active under contract property. They were listed at uh, $295.5. They got that. Uh, it's going to give you the highest average. So on. They're at $229.20. Uh, 25 cents per square foot and they were on the market for three days this house was probably very nice right um and we can go back to the listing and take a look at it if, you know if my customers have concern here we go with closed property so this is these are the details that matter all right i don't really care what you got going on this is the stuff that matters okay total listings five lowest price 240 249 900 highest price 340,000 flat right? Average price, $277,980,000 or yeah, yeah, you got uh, average price, $208.45 per square foot, right? Average days on the market, four. <clears throat> this is kind of the magic. This is probably all the information that I really need to make an assumption. I've already visited the house, right? And I've already made the assumptions that I need to make. The house is pretty average. It has builder grade kitchen cabinets, they never updated them. It has builder grade, what they call sheet vinyl or linoleum flooring. They never upgraded. It has the same bathroom fixtures that were there the day it was built, but it was built in 2005, not 1965. So that's okay, right? That's average. It's got an average yard with average landscaping and an average neighborhood, right? So I'm okay with doing an average result. Now, if I use my calculator, I'm going to take a look at this house as an average, and I'm going to say $208.45 per square foot. Multiplied by, and we're going to go right back to it. I'm going to skip around this a little bit. Bear with me. I'll go right back to the property that we're, we're looking to represent. Bear with me, bear with me. <laughs> Sorry, skipping past. <laughs> yeah, so 
it's 1,310 square feet. So I have $208.45 times 1,310 equals a sales price of $273,069.50. Okay. They're on the market at 270. Okay. So they're at an average pricing, right? Now it's going to be a short sale because they probably owe more than this, right? So for whatever reason, they've, they've taken some money against it. They felt like it was worth more. They owe more than the 270, right? Um, so that puts them in the short sale category. However, this house is probably priced pretty close to where it should be if it's in average condition, all right? Now, if it's in poor condition because these people left the, let the water run from the second floor all the way through the first floor and, you know, the, the hardwood buckled and, you know, and all that kind of stuff, uh, that's probably not a, a great pricing strategy. How about but, the description says you need um, cleaned and you need good cleaning and painted buggers and that? Yeah, so it's three bed, two and a half bath with two car garage. Home needs good cleaning and paint, but overall not bad condition. Bank recently had property appraised. Property sold as is through short sale, subject to bank approval. Okay, so short sales are a whole other category. We'll talk about those more specifically in a completely different training. But you know, for what for that reason, they're selling this one as a short sale. Go back to where we left off, though. So now I can. Now that I've got this amount of information from this report, I can actually go back and I'll show you this in a little bit and put in my private <clears throat> suggestion. Okay, I can write it in there. Sometimes I'll wait and actually do it in person with the client at the table. Okay, and I'll say, based on what I see, especially if I have not seen the property. Okay, if I have not had the chance to go and view the property and I don't know if it's an average, average condition or I don't know what the surrounding details are, I won't put anything in there until I get to the table and I'll meet them at the house on that first go. I'll go ahead and I'll put together the same, very same information and I'll have to make a few assumptions, but I won't put the, I won't write anything in there until I get there. And when I see that the house is in average condition, then I'll present an average price strategy. If I see that the home is in an immaculate condition and it's obviously been added to and updated and is as clean as they come, we can start to add on the high side of things, right? If I get there and the thing is a complete dump and it, it's never been painted, uh, there's handprints up and down the wall, there's Cheetos in the couch, I can assume we need to bring the pricing strategy down, but I'm able to do that. I didn't present a price and then have to re retract that, you know what I mean? So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so those are the statistics there. Um, I just want to finish going through the report with you guys. So these are the pending properties. These are you know, under contract is one of them. Um, the pro report, okay, this is a, a report in and of itself. Some, some people may just decide to use just the pro report, okay? Again, this is gonna lay out the, the pricing and the details and the statistics uh, a couple different ways, right? Some people are very analytical, some people prefer these graphs. This is why I put it together the way I do. I, I try to appeal to everybody because I don't necessarily know that about them before I get there. But this right here, does a very good job of taking your active, active under contract, closed and pending pieces and putting them all together. Now, this is this is taking a look at the entire picture. This is including an average of the active properties and the active under contracts. We don't know that those are factual. Try not to depend too much on the averages of anything that's including those. I'm looking at closed properties when I'm looking at the actual valuation. I'm using the information from the pending and the uh, active under contract and the active properties to understand which way the market's going, right? Is it up or down? Are they, they listed higher or lower than where I'm at, right? Uh, but I don't include that as fact when I'm looking at what we should price the house at um, based on a fact alone, right? Here's your addresses again. Okay, these are, um, these are closed, okay? So these closed property analysis here. Again, I'll highlight the stuff that I want them to know. For instance, when a home's priced correctly, they're getting 101.64% on average of what they're asking for. These guys got 102%. These guys got 105%. These guys got 98%, right? So when it's priced appropriately, 
people will come in, see what they want, and they will pressure each other and push the price higher than it already was to get the deal done, right? When you price your house too high at 345, you're probably going to have to negotiate down a little bit, right? Yes, they got they still got more than everybody else. Let's not mistake it. But ultimately, this says something too. We said that the house is probably priced on average 270, middle of the market for this neighborhood, and here it is. 277,980 is the average. Okay, this is the average list price. This is the average close price, right? And again, average sold, average days on market, and this is your close price over square foot. Okay, that's CP over square foot. So close price, two hundred and eight dollars and forty-five cents per square foot. That's the number I use to, to formulate the two hundred and seventy-four thousand dollar valuation that I came up with for this property. All right. Property summary again, just summarizing all the properties. And again, it's going to give it to them in just no pictures, no colors, no nothing. By listing, here's your averages, right? Average, average, average. It's going to lay it out for them. Pricing recommendations. This is where you could go in and so you could delete this or, or add to this and after analyzing your property. Uh, comparable properties on the market now, recent sales, and comparable properties that failed to sell, I conclude that the current market, your property is most likely to, in the current market, I'm sorry, your property is most likely to sell for, and you can go in here, and on, under the other screen, this is this is the finalized version, I can go back in, edit this, and say $274,000 if I've already seen this property, right? Or I can, I can do this at the table, write it in by hand, and say, now that I've seen your property, based on the information that we have here, I can predict with act with some amount of accuracy that your house should sell for this much, and it should take us about five, six days to get it done. You know what I mean? So it's all there. Um, here's your four up. So this is a side by side by side comparison. This is where it can get a little bit weird. Okay, remember when I told you to organize your stuff correctly? Um, so, and it doesn't always, it doesn't say it up at the top. It says it like midway. Um, where's that? No, maybe it doesn't. What are you looking for? Uh, well, sometimes it'll say like active. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. yeah, active, active, under, oh yeah, it does. I'm sorry. It's up here. I was looking at, I was looking for it in the middle of the page. But um, it's active, active, you know what I mean? Uh, and it's actually comparing. So we're comparing our, our property against ourselves here. That's why there's two active. Um, but sometimes it'll, it'll put it in here. It'll be active, pending, sold, active. And so it's a little harder to understand. But this is a side-by-side -side comparison. So if I want to look at square footage, I can look right across this line, and these are the square footage. Right. Well, you can just highlight all the cross if you want. Exactly. Because, again, people analyze information differently. And some people want to see it side by side by side, right? And so the beginning of each one of these pages is going to be 90, 190 shady. Okay. So it's putting that house first, side by side comparison to the rest of them. Now, it only compared them side by side once. So in the second page, it didn't do that. But these are active, closed, closed, closed. So I might highlight that section right there so that people understand, especially if it came up with like a mixed result. Um, but some, it will. Sometimes I'll just put it in there weird. But it'll, it'll look at um, the year it was built, right? 2001, 2004, 2006, 2005. Sometimes that matters, right? Just because they're in the same neighborhood doesn't mean that they're built at the same time, especially on opposite ends of the neighborhood. Um, square footages, uh, central air conditioning, ceiling fans, central AC. So, so somebody went in and added ceiling fans. Some of these might say on them, you know, wall, wall window. Right, like yeah, this one says asphalt driveway, asphalt driveway. This one doesn't say anything. What it doesn't have a driveway? We don't know. You know what I mean? We gotta look at the result. So, guys, this is a CMA though. And this is, and again, here's your 190 Shady Wood first, and then two additional properties that it's comparing to side by side. So it, it's just giving your customers uh, a couple different ways to digest the information. All right. Now, if I come in here, I, and again, we did. We came in here. Uh, kind of put the cart before the horse and wanted to see the report before we established a, a baseline price. I actually used the report to establish the baseline price, right? So now I can always go, it, it opens up in its own tab, so I can just click out of this, 
and I am back over here now. Oh, maybe I, uh, oh yeah, here I am, I'm sorry. Um, and I can go in here and I can go to pricing, right? And so it's breaking it down. It's giving me the, the pricing analysis and um, it says enter the price or price range that should appear on the CMA. I think we should list your house for da, 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 da. I can go ahead and say, I think we should list your house for, you know, 274. Yeah. Yep. Yep, so it's saying that on average it's giving us a 275,502. So, all right, and then that'll now if I keep that, it'll it'll be in my report. Again, you don't have to put that in your report. You can come up here, go to finish though, okay, and then I can go ahead and email this report right from here if I want to just email it to them. All right, so if you guys want to come up with CMAs and do this stuff, um, you can do this. You can do just that, okay. Um, CMAs are a great way to promote to a neighborhood. Um, I've heard Tom Berry talk about, you know, some of the people on his show talk about doing a CMA a day for new agents, right? Um, pick a pick an area like Woodfield, okay? Most of these homes you saw there, I had no trouble coming up with three bedroom homes. I could put together one CMA and mail it to every three bedroom home in that neighborhood and just have them understand, highlight the price, call me today with an exclamation point. We need inventory. Yikes, we have buyers and no no sellers, right? You can market it however you want. You probably shouldn't lie to people, but ultimately we know these houses are selling in an average of what, four days, four or five days. And, uh, you know, if somebody in there is even remotely in interest, interested in selling or what the price of their home might be, it'd be very easy for you to go in there and get that done. Okay, and you can go into uh, Prospect uh, or Prospects Plus is what we use, and you can buy the mailing list for that entire neighborhood for like eight dollars. Would you say that's accurate? Eight dollars for hundred, and then um, each person. So it usually holds up to about between eighty and ninety dollars. Right, but it, what if they just want the mailing list oh, yeah, yeah. for that neighborhood? Like, yeah. So Courtney agrees. Courtney usually does most of our postcards and mailing and stuff like that. So for about for about ten dollars, you could go and get that entire um, mailing address list and mail to that. You could also go into Prospects Plus and find just the people who um, are renters, just the homes that be basically a non-occupied owner, non-occupant owners, right? So the people who own homes in there but don't live in them. Now you want to make sure you mail to the, the address they do live at, but you can tell them, hey, that rental you have out there in Woodfield is worth $274,000 in today's market, did you know, right? And it's a good way to incite a, a reaction. Actions get reactions, right? You might go and knock the door with a CMA in hand, put together all the three bedroom houses, all that you could even go do by floor plan. You could you know, see where builders have put in different floor plans. And you could go knock all those floor plans in one day and just say, hey, I just wanted to let you know I was in the area working with one of my sellers. We're about to list the house right around the corner. And, you know, did you know your house is worth roughly $274,000 in this market? Obviously, we need to see the house and have a conversation with you about the details, but it's worth this much money based on the statistical data. Are you interested in selling? Have you considered selling? Do you know a neighbor, your mom, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle? Do you know anybody who's thinking about selling? Right now, the statistics say that seven to ten percent of everybody out there is at least considering selling in this market. Is at least considering it. Doesn't mean that they're actually going to, but seven to ten percent of every single person in your phone book, in your uh, mobile device, is considering selling or buying or doing something in the market right now. Okay. On average, people will sell every five to seven years. On average. They'll move, they'll, they'll make a change, right? So find the people that have been in there more than 10 years, start marketing to them. I bet you they're at least curious what their pricing would look like. So guys, thanks for jumping on this. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, are there any questions before we end the recording? No, I'm good. Great presentation though. Thank you. All right.
Sir May, I know this was one of the things that you had uh, kind of asked asked specifically for. Any questions from you? No, not at the time. All right, awesome. Glad you could jump on. Thanks, guys. We'll go ahead and stop recording. And.